All right, so this is part two of a big puzzle pack that I'm solving, um, a Christmas puzzle. Uh, it was a Christmas Secret Santa puzzle that was made for, for um, someone named Michael by Piotr V. Um, and so if you haven't seen the first set of puzzles, I did the first seven puzzles on the first part of this video. So I'll leave a link in the description up above all the places where you can go check that out. And now we're going to continue with the eighth puzzle. All right, next up is a Shaka Shaka. Now, I haven't done a Shaka Shaka in a while, but I have done some before. And these have the tendency to kind of break your brain a little bit. So this is kind of wild. So we're shading some half cell right triangles. You'll see we can click and put a right triangle in any different or in four different orientations in each cell, right? Um, a number in a black cell indicates how many triangles are orthogonally adjacent. So this two has two triangles orthogonally adjacent like that or like that. This would not be orthogonally adjacent to the two. It has to be like the side has to be touching. Uh, un unnumbered cells can have any number of triangles connected. All unshaded regions must be rectangular in shape. So essentially, we can do um, something like, like, uh, like, like this to create a rectangle in the unshaded area, right? And, and a rectangle can, of course, be a square as well, right? A square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not necessarily a square. Uh, so we're trying to make sure all of the unshaded areas are rectangular, and unshaded regions can't touch orthogonally because, uh, I mean, then it wouldn't really be just a rectangle, right? Like if you put two two rectangles next to each other, they're just a bigger rectangle. So you can't have, um, yeah, you can't have like an L shape with, and say, oh, it's two different rectangles. They have to be, they can touch the corners, but they can't touch otherwise. Uh, and that is all we need to know. So um, I'm gonna reset the timer, give this one a try. So we know we can't put any triangles on the zeros. So let's just go ahead and mark those, get some easy stuff in the grid here. Now, down here, so when you have an unshaded corner like this, uh, there's no possible way to ever do a, a angled piece like this because it's gonna necessarily not be rectangular, right? Like there's just no way to do that. So, that has to be unshaded. This has to be unshaded. Um, now, in order to make this a rectangle, we have to then block off these two edges to make that a rectangle. So now we've got this angled thing here. And so now the question is, do we do this or something like that? Now, if we do that, how is this going to become a rectangle? Right? But, but this either has to keep going or it has to be a right turn, a right angle. We, there's no, you know, we can't do, uh, yeah, you won't even let you do it. But it's either got to turn like this, which messes this up, makes it an L, or it has to go this way. So it has to go this way. And now again, it's got to be a right angle turn. It's got to be a right angle turn. And this one, this three tells us that we have to actually surround all three of them. This four means we've got to surround all four of these. So we can do all of that. This is going to have to become a rectangle by doing that. We've already got our one there. This is now a rectangle. That's good. These are unshaded. And again, this one, in order to be a rectangle, it's going to have to have something on the top, one direction or the other. This one also has to have something to make it like that. Now, this is going to have to be a right angle. Uh, this is going to have to be a right angle up here. Now, because this side is linked to the opposite side of the rectangle is going to also have to be linked to. So we're going to have to do that. Now, this one has to turn. It can't keep going off the edge of the grid. And so now we can fill in the rest of that big rectangle like that. Now, this one already has two. So we can unshade that one. Now, this one has to have two triangles. So it's got to have a triangle on the other side, which I think has to go this way. Because, yeah, it won't even let you make it any other direction. But there's no other direction you could do it, basically. Now, because this is a straight line, uh, well, it could turn this way, but now we've got a problem here, right? How does this... Actually, no, it can't. It could turn that way here. Actually, that does work, because now this is a, a rectangle. But I think um, we're going to have trouble elsewhere if we do that. But this down here is a rectangle. Now, it could continue up. It could, you know, end right here like this. We could do that. Oh, the three has to have on all three sides. Now this one, we actually don't know which direction it goes. 
one of the two directions. But we know it's going to do that, which does force this one. So now we can force that one. And the only way to make this a rectangle is either to knock it off like a square like that, which would work sort of, maybe. But... Yeah, that does work, I think. Maybe. I don't think it's going to work. But... <laughs> or to continue it like this, which is what I think is going to happen. But... Uh, so the three, it's either going to go this way, which could work like that, actually. Couldn't it? No, because then, then what do you do here? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't work with that. So I think I think the three's got to go this way. I think this is gonna go here. This is gonna continue up. We're gonna do that. Is what we're gonna do. And this has to continue this way. Now this one is a two. This one's a two. This up here. There's no way we can do anything in the corner. It has to be unshaded. So that means this one, and, uh, mm, oh, it could go like this. Yep, and this would be a rectangle. That would work. Uh, and then this, and that would be two. This would have to do that. We can go there. This, then, oh, but then this, yeah, no, that works. That works. We can go, we can go all the way up here and across there. And then we need to do, mm, but what's happening with this here? This is a problem because we've got an L shape here. And we can't do that. So that actually doesn't work. So... We can't do one there, so we have to do one here. And it can't go this way. So it's gotta be there. Which then means this is unshaded, so we've gotta have one here. Yeah, it's gotta go like that. Oh, we can keep going this way. This is what we need to do. Yeah, we just need to make this wider. That has to turn, obviously, it's gonna go like this. There we go, okay, that's what we need to do. This is just gonna be one big rectangle in here. We're just gonna leave these unshaded. I can already see that. Um, this one goes across there. This has to have a thing like this. So then we're gonna do that to make this a little square. This is gonna be, this has to have a thing. It's gotta go this way because this one's unshaded. And so then we've got to have this, and that's going to be another little square. This one needs to have two shaded cells, so we got to do that. We're going to go across here, make all of that. And then this almost works. This whole thing is now one big rectangle. This one is causing us all, all the problems down here. But we're going to be okay once we do... Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bunch of squares. That's what it's gonna be. We're just gonna do a stack of squares here and one big long oh, rectangle beside it. Stack of squares. There we go. Complete. Very nice. Okay. Pretty cool. Now this one's just weird because you're doing triangles in squares that are then making bigger rectangles that are on, at a diagonal except some of them that aren't at a diagonal and it's just this one breaks my brain all the time. So Anyways, very cool Shaka Shaka, and not like super difficult either, so very nice, because those can be very hard. So, all right, next puzzle. All right, so if you're a fan of Tetris, you will enjoy this next puzzle, I think, because this is Litz, and uh, basically we are putting Tetris shapes in the grid. So um, we're going to shade some cells. Every region must contain exactly four orthogonally connected shaded cells. So, I mean, it, it, the reason it's called Litz, by the way, is... We're putting tetrominoes in the grid, shapes of four cells. Uh, Tetris, tetromino, you'll notice those sound similar because Tetris is a game of tetrominoes. There's five tetromino shapes. We only use four in this, and there's a reason for that. I'll get to that in a minute. But the shapes are the L, the I, the T, it's kind of a squash T, and the S, L-I-T-S. You'll notice those are the shapes from Tetris. Now, we also have this shape in Tetris. And the reason it's not called Loitz or Lotus or something, although Lotus would be kind of a fun name if we could use that, is we have an extra rule. No two by two area may be entirely shaded. So we cannot do the O shape, essentially. And that's that's true even if you're doing like an L connected to an I. You can't shade an entire region. So you could do you could do something like this for an L and an I, but not this because we'd have a two by two region that's shaded. Um, and then, let's see, let's clear this back out. Uh, all shaded cells must be orthogonally connected. So we can't do an L over here 
and then have nothing connected to it. All the shaded cells have to be connected to each other. And if tetrominoes from two regions are orthogonally adjacent, they must be different shapes. So if we have an L here, we can't then have an L connected to it like this. We can have a T connected to it, but not an L. Um, and, and just changing the orient, yeah, changing the, you know, you can't do an L this direction and say, well, it's not an L, it's, it's a backwards L, so that's okay. No, that doesn't work. It's still the same shape. That's all we really need to know. So I'm going to reset the timer, give it a try. Um, we've got some freebies in here because we have to shade four cells in every region. So the four cell regions have to all be shaded. So that gives us a start right there. Now, we've got, uh, now because we've got an L and an I and an L, that means that, it only means that if they're, Orthogonal, so we can't do another L in here that touches the L, right? But we could still do an L in that region, as long as it's not touching one of the L's, essentially. Um, this region here is going to have to have an I in it, right? Somehow, because there's only those five cells in a straight line. So it's going to be an I for sure. So we know these three, and then one of the other two is going to be also... Uh, yes, yes, um, so over here we can't do a T-shape, we know that, and in fact, we can't do all three of these because, no, in fact, we can't do this one at all, or this one, because we can't have a two by two region, same here, same here, all of these L's, yes, yes, we can automatically unshade those, now, the only thing we can do in here, at this point, is an L-shape, right, because, it's just these five in an L. We're going to do an L one way or the other. If we do the L here, it's going to be two L's touching. So we can't do that. So it's got to be an L this way. Um, which then means, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. This can be unshaded, obviously. Now, the cells in the region have to be orthogonally connected. So this one can't because it just has nothing to connect to. We can't do uh, four cells down here because it'll be an I and it'll be touching an I no matter how we do it. So these all have to be unshaded down here. Now this whole bit down here, these two L's and this I, the only way they can connect to another shaded cell is right there. So that one has to be shaded. Now we can't do, we can't do any of these through here because if we do any of these or this, any of these three essentially, even if you start here, it's gonna force it to be an L and it'll be touching an L. So we can't do any of those. Now here it would be an I, so we could potentially shade that one. Um, over here, same thing. If we start here, we're going to have an L. We can't have an L touching an L. Uh, this could be an I over here. But otherwise, if we don't do that one, we can't start right here or start right here because it'll end up making an L touching an L. So the only way one of these two can be shaded is if it's an I straight through there. We could do an I up here. We could do an L up here. Hmm. Not sure there yet. Okay. Uh, what about up here? So we've got these five. We can do a T or we can do an L or an S. Those are the only options. We can't do an L. We can't do an L because it'll be an L touching an L. So we can't do those, those four. Therefore, this one has to be shaded, which means this one has to be shaded. Now, we're either going to do a T or an S. Either way, that one is also shaded. So one of these two is shaded. We can't do this one because we would have a two by two. So it has to be here. Now, again, we have to avoid a two by two. Um, in fact, we can't do, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, if we do any of these three here, any of these three here, even starting here, it's going to have to continue up and you're going to have a two by two. So we actually can't do any of these three. Similarly over here, we can't do any of these or we'll end up with a two by two. We also can't start right here because it'll have to wrap around and do a two by two. Now we could start here. We can't do both of these because it'll form a two by two. And so there's no way to do, we could do this and come down, we could. But we can't start over here, we'll end up doing both of those. So we can't do any of this, any of this. This has to be an I right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually should have seen that earlier, but that's okay. I haven't done a litz for a long time either. So now we've got the L, the I, the L, the I, the L, and the S, and they are completely surrounded by unshaded cells. So this has to be shaded, which forces those shaded. 
Um, we can't make, uh, we could do an I or an L here. We can't do an S because it's touching the S, but that's okay. Now, this big I shape in the middle here, where can it connect to the other shaded cells? The only place is right here. So it's got to do that. Now, it can't be an L because it's touching an L. So it's got to be an I. This one can't be an L. What else can we make in here? We can make an I, we can make an S, but one thing we know is this gray section down here at the bottom and this gray section at the left have to connect across the top. That's the only way they can touch each other. So we, we can't do an S like this. Well, we can't do an S anyways like that because uh, it, it gives all, it gives a two by two. But, um, Oh, we could do an S like this, couldn't we? That would work. We could do an I across the top. We could do a T like this. But somehow it has to connect over here. Now this one... So one of these two is going to be shaded here. These are all unshaded because we've already got three in that region. One of these two, if we do this one, it's not going to connect over there. So it has to do that. So it has to be an L. This has to be, and it can't be an L. The only way uh, shape we can make is an I. Therefore, this one has to be shaded to connect to it. And this one has to be shaded. The only way to do that is a T. There we go. All right. That was the Litz puzzle. And uh, that one was an I, which is one of the shapes as well. Although, um, and we, we even put an I inside of an I, didn't we? Yep, we put an I inside of an I. Okay. Very nice. Uh, do we only have one S? One S and two Ts is all we did. It was mostly Ls and Is. Okay. All right, next puzzle. All right, next up is a double Chaco. Now, I feel like I've done one of these before, but I have no idea what it is. I don't remember at all, so it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll learn it with you. Uh, <laughs> divide the grid into regions along grid lines according to the following rules. Each region must contain an equal number of white and shaded cells. Ah, I, it's all coming back to me now. Each region, okay, so you could do something like uh, like this, right? It has two and two, or it could be two and two like this. Um, all white cells in a region must be orthogonally connected as do all shaded cells in a region. So you can't have, um, we can't do something, you know, something weird like this where the, the cells aren't shaded, aren't connected. That wouldn't be the right number anyways. But like this, because there's two whites and two grays, but they have to be connected to each other. The whites have to connect to the whites. Um, the white and shaded portions must be of the same shape. Now, again, right here I did like an I shape. We could also do kind of an L shape like this, because the white and the gray are still the same shape, even though they've been rotated. Um, and a number in a cell indicates how many of that type of cell must be in its region. So the gray two here doesn't mean there's two cells in the region. It means there's two gray cells in the region. And that's all we need to know. So let's reset the timer and give it a try. Okay, so we know there has to be six gray cells in this region. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It has to be that because they have to be orthogonally connected. And the only way to then have now, now, oh no, there's two ways. So we could do this, right? That would work. Or we could do a straight line and have six cells in a straight line over here. Both of those are possible. Um, now the gray here, well, let's look at this two first. Well, twos in general have to be a domino, right? There's no other shape you can make with two cells. So this gray is going to have to have a white domino. Maybe the 14 is the place to start. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Yep. That's the place to start. Cause it has to be this, this like, um, box with a stove pipe. I don't know what you want to call it. Whatever the shape is, a big a big hockey stick with a the stick. Uh, it's the end of a hockey stick with the stick broken off. I don't know. Anyways, this shape we have to then make that shape out of white cells. The only way to do that two four six eight ten twelve. Yep, is right here. So that is gonna be a region right there, which is kind of a wild looking region, but that's the only way to make that gray shape in the white. Yep, yep, so that's what it has to be, which then means our six is going to be like this. Now, our two, okay, so if we if we take this cell right here as part of the two, then this gray one is isolated right there by itself. So it can't be this gray cell. So it has to be this gray cell that goes with this two, which gives us two here, and they have to connect to two. Now, it could be down that way. It could be 
right next to it. We don't really know, but we know this much, and we know this is going to have two. So there's six more cells up here. If this if this uses this gray cell, how are these six going to connect to a white area of the same shape? They can't. They can't. So this has to be the two. Now this is an interesting shape that we then have to make down here. Now it could be a couple different ways, right? We could do it like this because you get reflection and rotation, but then you've got the white and the gray problem over here. So I think it has to be um, this way. And then we do that, that goes up there, and then we do that, there we go. Cool, very nice, so double Chaco. Uh, once I started doing it, I kind of remembered it, but it's been a long time. So that was a pretty neat one. You'll notice it was an S shape, of course. All right, next puzzle. All right, next up is a Nori Nori. Now I know I've done one of these before, but I don't exactly remember all the rules. So let's let's take a look at this. Shade some cells of the grid according to the following rules. Every region must include exactly two shaded cells. So there has to be two shaded cells in every region. Shaded cells must form dominoes consisting of two adjacent cells. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have a domino in a region. We could do this, right? But you could also do this and that could be your two cells in the region and they could be dominoes this way that are sticking out. So you're creating dominoes, but the domino doesn't necessarily have to be completely in a region. Uh, the dominoes may be within a single region or spanning two regions across the border, as I was just saying. Dominoes may not touch orthogonally. So again, if you did something, if you did these two and you had to do dominoes, they couldn't be like this. You can't have your dominoes touching, but you can do that. And uh, is that, that's all the rules I think. I don't think there's any, yeah, there's no restrictions on like all the unshaded have to touch or anything like there is on some puzzles. So let's reset the timer and see how we do. Okay, well, we can obviously start here because there's only two cells in that region. So those have to be, and we can't have dominoes touch. So we can do this. Now, if we do these two, these two are unshaded and we can't shade two in that region. So we can't do both of those, which means we have to do this one because there's only three options in that uh, region. Now this one's either gonna have to stick up or to the right. Either way, that one will have to be unshaded. Um, let's see, what else can we do? What else can we do? Uh, if this one is shaded, then there's no way to then shade two of these three, right? Because either the domino doesn't extend in there and you can only shade one, or it extends into there and the other two are unshaded. So this one cannot be shaded. Um, now we don't have the same restriction here because it's got this extra little bit that pokes up. But we can't shade this one, or we have the same problem here. So we know, yeah, we know that one's unshaded. Now, can we shade both of those? I think we can. That's that's possible. Um, can we shade both of these? Yes, I think so. Um, over here, this one. So again, if we shade this, it's gonna mess up that L shape, so we can do that. Uh, same deal up here, right? No, no, not the same, because we could do this and that one. Oh, but, but this one's unshaded because of this one. And so then we now have that same problem there, and now we have these three. So we, when you have this little three cell L, you can kind of mark the one that it's surrounding as unshaded. Okay, um, what else can we do? What else can we do? Okay, this one here, it's got to go one of these two. Is there, well, right, so here's the thing. This either sticks to the right, in which case this is unshaded and that one's shaded. Or it sticks up, in which case this is unshaded and these are both shaded. Either way, this one is shaded for sure. So, can this one be shaded? That's an interesting question. That would force that up. No, because, because we can't do both of these or it takes away both of those. Yeah, that's the way to look at it, is they have to stick over here and it would take away both of those. So this is unshaded, this is shaded, forces all of that. Therefore, this is shaded. Uh, if we go... One of these two is shaded. We know that much. If we go up here... 
That's okay, I think. So where do we go from here? Okay. Well, this either goes up or to the right, so this is unshaded. If it goes over here, then we have to do that. Which I think is okay. If it goes up here, then we have to do that, which I think is okay. So I don't think we know there yet. I feel like I should know. Um, if this sticks up, we're gonna have that. This would it would have to be this one. But I don't see why that's a problem. Okay. There's something I should be seeing here that I'm not, but that's okay. Um, can we do both of those? We can, I think. Can we do both of these? Don't see why not. Can we... Oh, okay. How about this? Can this one be unshaded? Well, no, because you have to shade both of these, and this wouldn't be able to have a domino. So that one is shaded for sure. Now, the other one, it's either going to go here or here. Either way, the domino here is in this set of three. So it cannot extend this way, which means this one is unshaded. Now, if it goes this way creates a chain reaction that doesn't really cause a problem, I don't think. If it goes this way, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm having trouble with this one. I always have trouble with Nori Nori, I feel like. I feel like I just... There, I haven't quite figured out the logic of it yet. I don't know. I just haven't done enough of them is basically the issue. If we do... Okay, we can't do both of these. We know that because it, it takes away two of the three there. So we can't do both of those. We have to do at least one down here. Could we do both of these? I feel like we could. No, no, because you'd end up with this one isolated. So we can't do both the top, we can't do both at the bottom, so it has to be either vertical, which we can't do vertical there, so the only thing we can do is vertical here. Which forces vertical there, that's what we need to do. Okay. Now, uh, there's only two cells in this region that are possible. That one has to extend up that way. Now, we've already got one in this region. We need to have one more. We can't do this one because it would be isolated. So it has to be there, which is going to stick up there. The other one has to be there. This is what we needed. That can't extend up, so we do that. This goes this way. There we go. Yep, that's good. Okay, um, now, uh, down here, we've got three. Three cells. Um, oh, we could still do this and that. Or both of these. No, no. If we do both of these, you take away this one, you'd have to do both of these, but it would create an L shape. So you can't do both of those, so you have to have this one. And now you can't do this one by itself, so it's got to be there, which forces that and that. And now there's... We could do either one of these, though, I think. I think we can do either one of those. Okay, up here, there's only two in this region available. Now there's only two in this region available. They have to stick out into the neighboring regions. There's only one left in that region. It's got to stick over there. We can't do this one up here. It'll be isolated. We have to do that. It has to stick down. We have one in this region now. We need to have one more. So it's either got to go into there, which doesn't work because they can only have one in that region then, or the only other place it can extend into, because it can't extend down here, obviously. You'd have three in a row. It has to connect there. Which then means that this one is unshaded, that's shaded, this goes there, double there, there we go. Okay. Well, that was a lot longer than it should have been. Um, the square down here in the corner was the place to look, and I suspect that's one of those things where if you play Nori Nori, you just know, oh, well, a square in the corner has to be this kind of thing when it's next to this. and Kind of like the, the L shape, the three cell L shape, you know you can do the one that it's surrounding. It's just kind of little patterns that you learn like that. So there we go. That was the Nori Nori done slowly, slowly <laughs> on to the next one. All right. Next up is a Nurikabi 
So we're gonna shade some cells of the grid according to the following rules. Numbers cannot be shaded. All shaded cells must, must be orthogonally connected. So as usual, our cells, we can't have, you know, a two different sections of cells. They all have to be connected somehow. Um, no two by two area may be entirely shaded, which is always, um, so, you know, old, people who have been Strosolves fans for a while will remember uh, that I always forget the C, but the real OG Strosolves fans, before it was Strosolves, <laughs> when it was just me, will know that I always forget the 2x2 two two region rule. Um, way before I started forgetting the C, I was forgetting the 2x2 two two rule. Uh, anyways, unshaded cells must belong to orthogonally connected regions containing exactly one number. So, our, our shaded cells are going to surround unshaded cells of uh, a certain size according to the number. Now, that doesn't work. There we go. Something like this, right? So this is an unshaded region of size 2. It has a number 2 in it. They will all contain exactly one number. So you can't have an area down here that doesn't have a number. Uh, and the number in a region indicates how many unshaded cells are in that region. The unshaded regions may touch at corners, but not orthogonally. So you can't do something like this and say, well, that's a 2 and a 1, and they're just connected. That's, that's No, that's a 3 with a 2 and a 1 in it. That doesn't work. So there we go. All right, let's reset the timer. Okay, so, I mean, the one you can immediately surround because it has to be just by itself. So we can get some easy shaded cells in the grid just like that. Now, we know that this cell has to, all the shaded cells have to connect. So this one has to connect, so it has to stick up. This one could connect up or to the right. We've got a couple of options there, though it's possible. So we can't do the same thing with that one. Now, what else can we do? This one's gonna have to go to the left or down. No, nah, this two, so it has to be, this has to be the two, so we can shade around that. We can do that. Um, now the, this cell down here, where is this gonna connect to? Um, no, this one can be shaded, this one can be shaded, but we can't shade all three of these, that's the key. We can't shade all three of these, uh, so this one, if we shaded this one, we couldn't shade one of these down here, but then we'd have an empty space. So basically this one has to be unshaded. Now it could be more than just that one's unshaded, but this one definitely is. And what's it going to connect to? What region? It can't connect to this two. It's got to connect to the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That has to be the seven, which means we could shade all the way around it. Now this can't be by itself, so it has to be shaded. This one can't be by itself. Actually, yeah, we can shade all those because we can't have uh, an unshaded region without a number in it. Um, now this one has to connect to the rest of the grid, so it's got to go there. Or the rest of the shaded cells, so it has to connect there. This this is uh, three of the two by two, so we have to unshade that one because of the two by two rule. Um, we If this was unshaded, the twos would connect. So we can shade that one. We can do the same thing actually anywhere. I should have done that immediately too. Anywhere that there's two clues diagonally connected, you can shade in between them because you can't. You have to keep the clues from being connected. Uh, let's see. This is potential two by two issue right there. So now this is our two. So that has to be shaded. Um, let's see. What else do we need to do? What's next? Are there any other potential two by two shadings? We can't shade all the way across here. Actually, look, this two sticks down. That's gotta be that way. Yep, that's all forced. There we go. Okay, uh, now this whole area needs to connect, but it doesn't have to connect right there necessarily. That two could go either direction, I think. Now, this the, down here, we've got the same kind of problem. We can't shade all three of these, right? And if we shade this one, these are isolated. So this has to be unshaded. It's going to, again, be the seven like this. That has to connect. Uh, this has to connect. We can't have an unshaded separate region there. This would be a two by two issue. So we've got to do that. Let's see. This is now the two. So we can shade those. Somehow this whole bit down here has to connect, but it could still connect on the left or the right, I feel like. We don't know for sure where it connects. And this has to connect up, but... Okay, where's the place to look next? So somehow we've got to come in... Interesting, so we've got like a symmetrical thing going here. 
if we do that, those have to be shaded. This would be unshaded. It would have to be part of the three. And I think that causes us a bunch of trouble over here. Yeah, because these would both have to be shaded. So maybe that's the thing to look at is this three. It has to stick one way or the other. If it goes down here, then you're going to have... Well, it doesn't really matter which way it goes. If it doesn't stick both directions, if you don't go one way, if it's shaded over here, you have to fill that in, but you also have to fill this in, you're going to have a two by two. So this three has to go both directions, essentially, is what that comes down to, which fills in all of that. And now we need to avoid... Uh, a, if, if we don't... If this comes across here, we're okay. If this goes up, we have to shade all of... Uh, uh, well, no, oops. If that's shaded, wait, if it's unshaded, that's what I'm trying to say. If that's unshaded up, you're going to have a two by two issue there. So that one has to come across like that. Same thing here. If it goes up, you're going to have a two by two issue. So it has to go to the right. There we go. Okay. All right. And this was another M. That's an M. Yeah, it's an M. Yep. If you, if you really get back and look at it, it's an M. Did we have a T on the last one? I wasn't even paying attention. What was the last one? <laughs> yeah, the last one was a T. The Nori Nori was a T. This is an M. Yep, yep, okay. All right, on to the next one. All right, now we're on to the Akari, which is obviously an A shape, and Akari starts with A, which is kind of fun. Um, and I've done quite a few Akaris before as well, although I don't feel like I'm very fast at solving them, so we'll see how this goes. It is a, a, a relatively small Akari. Akari is fun. Um, I've even done some combo Akari, uh, Akari cave puzzles combinations, which is pretty fun too. I did one as part of a, a pirate puzzle hunt, which was pretty interesting. That was fun to set. But anyways, the way Akari works is we're placing lights in the grid. This is, this is fun because it's so different. So we're placing lights and a light illuminates in, in the row and column in all directions, as far as you can see. And th that's one of the nice things about the Puzzlink website here for Akari is it illuminates for you when you click to put a light in there. You can also right click to say this is not a light. Um, lights illuminate all cells. Uh, all empty cells in the grid must be illuminated. So we have to have a light. It doesn't mean we have to have light in every cell, but a light has to shine on every white cell. A number block indicates how many lights are orthogonally adjacent to it. So this one needs to have one light connected to it. This one needs to have a light connected to it. And exactly one. We can't have two lights connected to the one. Uh, and a light cannot illuminate another light. So we can't have a light here and another light there. They can't shine on each other. Their, their paths can cross, something like this, right? They're both shining on these two cells, but the lights can't shine on each other. And that's all we need to know. So let's reset the timer. <clears throat> now, let's fill in these zeros just automatically, obviously. Uh, the three here has to have three lights, so we can do that. And now there's only two spots for those lights. Now there's only one spot for that light. This one has to have two, and that f fulfills the one there. Uh, the only way to light this cell is with a light right there. Um, and we need to have two. There's only two available there. And we need to light this cell, so there's got to be light in one of those two. If we do... We can't put a light right there, so either we put a light here and we, uh, oh no, if, if we put a light here, then that one is empty, so we have to put a light there, put a light there, there we go. All right, pretty cool. So not the fastest of the puzzles so far, but pretty darn close. That was pretty quick, and I feel like if I wasn't explaining, I could have done that one really fast, so very nice. Nice quick Akari puzzle. All right, next up is a ring ring. Now, the way ring ring works is we're drawing rings essentially now they're rectangles they're not really rings per se but we're drawing rectangular shaped loops essentially um and the loops can only intersect other loops at four-way crossing so you essentially what that means is you can't have a, a loop here and another loop there right because that that it can't make like a figure eight but we can do this they can cross each other this way they just can't cross at the corners they can't touch at the corners essentially um uh, they also can't have share an edge, right? They can't share an edge, so you can't do two rings like this. That doesn't work. And every cell in the grid has to be part of a loop. You have to use every white cell in the grid, and that's all we need to know. So we'll reset the timer, and away we go. 
So, I mean, one thing we can do right away is come to these corners and we can do the corners because it has to be, you have to use this corner cell and it has to be part of a ring. Now, where these rings intersect right here, we know they have to cross. And when you hit the edge of the grid, it also has to cross like this. And so now this ring is going to have to finish and form the ring. I mean, you just have to do that last little bit. This cannot turn down here. They'd share an edge, so it has to keep going, which is going to connect all the way across. And now, since these connect, we know that the other side has to come down. Plus, it's going to do the same, same thing over here. Now, it's going to get to there but it's not necessarily going to, ooh, we don't necessarily know that goes down any farther than that. We know this much, because if this continues down, this could come across and make a small ring. We don't have the same problem that we had down here. Do we? Yeah, we don't, yeah. But we know this goes, this corner. The, the, the issue was the corner was a little bit higher. That's why that one's different. All right, let's continue with our corner work here. This has to keep going. This corner, so it can't connect there. So it's got to keep going this way, and then this one's going to turn, so it's got to finish going that way. Now we kind of create a new corner there. It's going to force all of this and all of that. And we have a corner here, so that's going to force it to end. This has to go this way. It's got to stick up there. This is going there, so it finishes it. Now we've got a new corner that has to cross. We've got a new corner here that has to cross that forces that to cross. Uh, and we've got a new corner here. Interesting, that's going to create a ring. We've also got a corner right here because it can't connect. No, we don't, we don't, we don't, because this could go across there. Where is this going to go? So it either turns and comes down here, or it connects up to, oh, it can't connect up to here. It can't connect up to here because that one has to be part of this one, which can't come down far enough. Well, yeah, yeah, this side has to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. This has to come up because this both sides have to do the same because it's a rectangle. So we go there. There we go. Now this can't go all the way up there because there's no way for these other sides to connect as rings. And if it goes up one more, it, it would be sharing an edge. So it has to turn there and go that way, which now creates a new corner there that's going to go there. These have to connect, and so they have to go that way, and that way, and down there, and there. There we go. Cool. All right, that was the ring ring, and look at the rings. They form an S. Now, I that's really cool. I like that. Um, that one is not quite as obvious. I would not have noticed that made an S if I wasn't looking for an S in the grid. That's very cool. I like that. All right, that'll do it for part two. So we've made it through puzzle, puzzle number 14 now. So we'll continue with part three coming soon with the last seven puzzles. So if you aren't subscribed already, you better subscribe to make sure you get notified when part three goes up. Here's an interesting question. Which song has spent the most time at number two on the Billboard Top 100? Without oh, okay. making it to Oh, that was really one. good. On the left, awesome. LA over here. Okay, it is L and T, just like I was thinking now. Al Alphabet. Alphabet. There we go. That's a good one. 